every time I post up a video about cooling here on the channel, you guys always ask me to check out what Arctic have on offering. And today we're finally getting around to checking out Arctic's freezer, their liquid freezer 2 420. Now this is, I've been told by you guys in the comments, this thing beats the Corsair H170i Elite Capellex cooler, which was the previous uh, cooler that we tested out at Tech Air City, which was really good. It gets really good temperatures. It scores pretty well. However, we have a new king here. The Arctic cooler is just so impressive that it's in another tier of its own. So if Corsair was in A tier for cooling, this thing is now in S tier from Arctic. They're just in a different league in so many more ways than just the cooling as well. I was blown away by not just the build quality, but everything, the attention to detail. For instance, on their uh, cabling, they connect it all together, daisy chained all the way through the tubing to the pump unit itself. So basically all you got is one PWM four pin fan header and one uh, three pin five volt addressable RGB header. If you don't like RGB, you can save $10. If you like RGB, they've got this option. So straight away, the build quality, the attention to detail is just on another level to any other water cooler I've experienced in the past. Not only that, the fans come pre-attached as well. I don't have to waste any time there. I can get straight into mounting this thing in a build and I'm good to go. Now, the Corsair on the other hand, let's take a look at the H170i Elite Capellex. It's like $100 more expensive. It's got inferior cooling, which we'll get onto soon, but you just got a mess of cables everywhere. It's proprietary, it's uh, Corsair's commander unit. And it really shows that companies like Arctic, I think like, I didn't even know about how good this cooler was. So thank you guys in the comments for recommending me this, but it's ridiculously good. And this company, I think deserves kudos for making something so good. Cause let's get into the results. Here we've got an i7-13700K coming in five degrees lower and doing so with also much less noise. Now you also notice in the graphs, I've thrown in a couple of other coolers here, as well as a 360 mil Igo from AliExpress. It's coming in around 86 bucks shipped. So I guess it's for those people who just want to have a water cooling or maybe a PC reseller who wants to advertise liquid cooled in their builds and at RGB, that thing's gonna do an okay job. But the Corsair and the Arctic are coming in with better temperatures, but then the Arctic is just that league ahead. It's so good in terms of its cooling and noise that I was just shocked because I've compared the H170i before, the Elite Capellus, to a custom water-cooled build, and it's done an extremely good job of pretty much matching a proper custom water-cooled loop. So this thing is pretty much the best you can get for water cooling bar none. So very impressive from the top down to the bottom. There's no software or any perky software you need to install. You can just run your motherboard's ARGB or a simple controller. Now going over the radiator itself, 40 mil thick versus the other two contenders here, which are 28 mil thick. However, at the base of the unit, there's also a little fan as well, a little 30 mil fan that does its own job of, I guess, giving immediate cooling down to the base unit itself. They may be stopping me and saying, Brian, let's get some more tests done show me the gaming numbers. And here's where we tested Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p lowest settings with an RTX 4090. So kind of unrealistic, but if you're gaming, you can expect the best temps, just like those Cinebench scores out of the Liquid Freezer 2. And also when we move over to Returnal, which is a little bit lighter on the CPU, the temperatures are better yet again. Though what about an i9-13900K? You wanna step things up, you want the granddaddy, you want the maximum heat output you love wasting power, well then this thing is not gonna be wasted at all in terms of its cooling performance. Here's where it's coming in yet again, just a shade under 80 degrees. The one more thing I'll draw attention to here is the base plate of the cooler. It's this shiny copper that's been almost near polished. So they've made it that flat that you really don't have to lap it. I mean, you could lap it if you wanted to get a mirror finish, but this thing is getting really close to that. So they've done a really good job also on the base plate too, in that it's gonna to contact extremely well, but also included in the box, 
They've included MX-5 thermal paste with this edition. I didn't even know there was MX-5. I always thought MX-4 was Arctic's best uh, thermal paste solution. But they've included some MX-5 for you, and that's the thermal paste that I used on all three coolers here today. So as I'm editing this video, I realized I missed out two crucial points, which I'll add in right now. The first being the size of this cooler fitting into most cases. I think most cases out there will not be able to fit this 420 mil water cooler. So if you are gonna get this, make sure your case can fit it, make sure you've got a really big case. It, even then, if your case can fit a 420 mil cooler, make sure the height can fit if you're gonna mount it up the top, for example, because it does have that 40 mil thick uh, radiator. It's also got quite thick fans. So you will need the height as well as not just the length to fit this cooler. Now, the second point is the three fans connect to that one fan header at the pump. So you got four components running off that one fan header. So do make sure as well, I'd recommend having a motherboard with a water pump Pacific fan out header that gives out usually double the power of a standard four pin uh, PDOM fan connector. So those two things are worth mentioning. Other than that, let's move on. The one more thing you may be worried about is the actual cooler base itself. Is it too large? May it interfere with say chokes or capacitors or heat sinks on a motherboard. And here's where I tested on a Z790, which was absolutely fine. Tested on a B760 as well. And that's got some pretty compact points there with the capacitors and the chokes and also the heat sinks. And that was no problems too. That was coming close to the LGA 1200 socket and this thing mounted absolutely fine. So in other words, Arctic have really done their homework with this cooler and it just shows. And again, when we're coming out of this one, recommendation now, S tier water cooling, 170 bucks, which honestly, if you want the best cooling available to date, that's a very reasonable price. So I'm looking forward to what this company's doing. I mean, my experience with Arctic before this has really only been, I think their MX4 thermal paste, but also their, I tried their GPU, uh, external gpu coolers in the past their add-on ones and they're very good too so i sort of really want to check out more of what rtx got to offer and hopefully they offer something for maybe rtx 4080s and 4090s in a smaller form factor so that we can start fitting the rtx cards in um mini itx builds that would be very cool to see arctic do that because they're certainly capable of delivering the best cooling in the business so this one blew me away thank you guys so much for recommending this in the comments they're going forward with the corsair h170i it's a hundred dollars more and it's really hard to justify that hundred dollars i mean i thought this cooler when at least when i tried it it was coming under 200 bucks if i remember correctly so the price has gone up and you've got that LCD screen there, which, I mean, $100 for an LCD screen over the Arctic, it's a big ask, as well as the fact that you've then got to use a commander unit. It's much more of a hassle to install. But that being said, Corsair do have their RGB ecosystem. So if you are into uh, fancy lights and what they have to offer there, that may be for you. But when it, as it stands, the Arctic is the king of water cooling, and it's actually pretty solid value for what it's doing with a lot of these high-end CPUs. Anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below what's your thoughts and opinions about these water coolers. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. But also, I haven't given much attention to the iGo, but that's just a banger. I mean, it's, it's okay. It gets pretty noisy, but it checks out. I just, with the iGo, I have no idea why they have this big desire to just push their brand name right on the cooler. I wish brands would stop doing that. Like just the logo is just the only thing you see as soon as you look at it. And it's it's kind of like, yeah, I, I, I know it's an iGo. That's what I bought. So why do you have to like make my computer like a, an advertisement for your brand? Like literally, that's uh, so kind of wish iGo would change that. But unlike their ICE uh, 400 SE air cooler, the iGo water cooler 
it fitted fine everything checked out in terms of build quality and the performance was decent so it's a decent water cooler and it will handle an i9 13900k just and also handle the i7 13700k okay with a bit of noise also before we get on out of here we got the question of the day which comes from ground game and they ask what is this particular titan z equivalent to today's gpu muscle power so uh, in a recent parts hunt we did i'll put the link up here we uh, got a titan z in for a really good price actually so in terms of gpu muscle power today maybe like a gtx 1660 super i actually have to test that card still and see what how it can perform but it's really not going to be that fast because unfortunately the sli factor of it is going to be a big letdown especially in modern games though the biggest uh i guess plus for that card is it has a fp64 floating point 64 bit performance and so that's the biggest draw card to the titan z especially of the Kepler era. Anyhow, hope that answers that question. And if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell on the way out, and I'll catch you in the next video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.